just that, frankly, it was hard to find a geologist to come speak to you all right before the semester starts. And we're hoping to do more geology, even some field classes with geology, since it's something that folks seem really interested in through the next Science Institute session. So, in a nutshell, that's why you all have me today. Uh, but I'm excited to share what I've learned, and so we can consider it a bit of a peer-to-peer -peer kind of teaching today. Uh, what I love to hear from all of you is that you all represent a diverse level of geology knowledge and backgrounds, and that's something important about the Science Institute. Part of today is going to be talking to each other about resources you can share, expertise you can share, and we'll kind of get to that later you know, as you're working through some of the activities that Alexis and Nikki have for you a bit later. So, we're going to talk about this incredible story of fire, ice, and inland seas today, and how that formed our region. Um, to do so, we're going to just keep in mind that, uh, do we want to turn the lights down? Yeah. 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 I don't want folks to fall asleep. We'll be fun after certain things today. Better? Okay. So keeping in mind what the Great Lakes look like today, and this is a view from space. And um, for just a quick review of our Great Lakes this kind of acronym, obviously we have Superior and Michigan here on. Rock that cools 
the, that rock could be made of lots of different things, um, but rock that's moving from the core of the earth toward the surface in a, and pouring out in a variety of ways. Volcanoes, lava flows, there's a huge array of ways that rock can appear at the surface. Uh, the, these big words in red, so the ones we're talking about right now, sedimentary rock, this is sort of the other major piece where you have layers of rock that get pushed together over time, deposited things like rivers and oceans, often are the source of sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rock is rock that's been squeezed by pressure, lots of pressure and heat over time, and it's rearranged a bit to be another type of distinct rock. When we talk about rocks, we're actually talking about an assemblage of minerals. So if we think about rocks as the cookie and the minerals as the ingredients that make up the cookie, lots of different ways you could go about mixing the same ingredients with heat and time and pressure and uh, other environmental factors. Uh, some other things to keep in mind, uh, there are lots of different processes that are happening over the next many millions of years in our story. And simple things like the, uh, the fact that basically weathering happens at the surface, so wind and water are the most powerful forces in the world of eroding high areas, things like mountains, that sediment that is eroded away, those little pieces, move downhill generally toward lower spaces. So we're gonna see some of these big erosion events um, happen in our region. That's generally what's happening, high ground eroding to lower grounds. That stuff gets washed away and deposited elsewhere and then recycled. Uh, this deposition of sediment that Vicky's research looks at, these layers over time being um, deposited at the bottom of water bodies, that's important, being compacted, uh, that's all part of the process, things being melted and recycled. Um, one of the things that we'll also mention at one point in history are these great uplifts, basically the earth moving upwards. Lots of things cause that, maybe it's plates colliding, it might be forces below, but uplift the land physically moving up. So land by, uh, I'm talking about the crust. Questions about any of those sort of basic steps? Okay. In your packet, uh, I've given you a couple of different geologic time frames. When we talk about geologic time, I find it mind-blowing to think about millions of years. The numbers are really hard for me to keep track of. I'm not a numbers person, which is great because generally in this way, way back time, we're talking more relatively. So generally time and geology, uh, there's some absolute dating that can happen much closer to where we are in time today. But for the most part, we're talking relatively. Before, after, during, and in the rock layers, in the story of these, um, these times, we're talking about above and below. Uh, maybe those above and below layers are actually flipped and oriented in time. And um, so much of what we'll talk about today is really about relative time, before, after, during. I give you a couple of different time lines today. Because folks go about organizing and providing different layers of information in timelines. And uh, so there's the first three pages are some examples from different resources that I've been scouring lately. Uh, we're going to focus mostly on the front page because I love that it's Minnesota specific. It is not Great Lakes specific, however. So you'll see um, as we look down uh, the left hand side of the page, we have millions of years. We then have these bigger categories, uh, these eras, and then moving in even further, further, these little rectangles are the periods. And then some books even break it down further. You have actually epochs in between here, and then they can continue to break it down even more. You'll notice that in this chart, it talks about the types of rocks that are being deposited or, or created here. Uh, it also says, oh, we don't know, big question mark. There's no record of what happened during that period in Minnesota. Doesn't mean there isn't a record elsewhere. So we'll see what happened in the Great Lakes, often based on data from other places. Um, we'll then also see how life is related. We could go do like days and days and days, years of talk about life in the Great Lakes, and that's hopefully the major focus of our new exhibit um, in the next couple years. So there'll be a few moments when I mention life, which pains me as a biologist, but uh, we're gonna focus really on the geology today. And obviously, huge connections between what's happening on Earth in a geologic sense and what's happening from a life point. 